Okay, I think we can get started. Uh, today we will talk about the uh, anomaly detection um, using deposing model. So here is an overview of this approach. Um, first of all, the innovations. There are basically two bullet points here. The first thing is uh, it uses um, a diffusing model um, for translating all the images into one class. You can see, see this anomaly detection problem as a binary classification problem. And uh, this diffusion model will translate all the input images into one class. And, uh, and it will then uh, calculate the difference map between the translated image and the original input image um, to determine whether the, uh, the input image has, has a anomaly region. And the empirical result shows that, empirical result shows that uh, the result is a pretty uh, shows like a promising performance. Um, it achieves a die score of 0.7 and the um, area under the ROC curve uh, of 0.986 roughly. About the limitations, uh, uh, the first thing is uh, the die score is uh, not too high. And the second thing is that the image level of normal detection evaluation is uh, uh, not provided actually. Um, about the intuitions of this approach, I think uh, there are also two points here. The first thing is uh, the noising and the denoising process uh, can help the model learn very meaningful representations. And the second thing is uh, the guidance from a pre-trained classifier uh, can lead to, lead to the translation of all the input images into one specified class. But, um, yeah, I just want to mention that this um, publication uh, it's published in Mikai 2022. First, let's talk about the system architecture of this approach. Um, the input of this system is the is an arbitrary input image X. And uh, as you all may know about this diffusing model, there is a, a forward a noising process and a reverse denoising process in this approach. Um, the, the, the forward noising pro forward noising uh, process in contains um, multiple uh, iterations and it, at each iteration um, a generating model is used to generate a, a noisy image uh, based on the previous step image for them here we get a, um, a noisy image from X and I, at iteration two we get a noisy image X2 um, from this uh, noisy image X1, uh, et cetera. And for the reverse process, um, still we, we generate a sequence of uh, denoised image. Uh, we can treat them as the reconstruction of uh, uh, all, the, all the images in the forward process. For example, this X1 hat can be treated as the denoised image of uh, the, the noisy image at iteration X, at iteration one. And in the, in the in the training process, um, the corresponding noisy image and the the denoised image will be combined together to formulate a MSE loss. And uh, since we can see we have multiple iterations, so we have a MSE loss at each iteration, and all of them will be combined together to get the final MSE loss. One extra thing here is the. Uh, classification loss. So we incorporate a uh, pre-trained classifier here. And for this image, uh, we will assign it a label, for example, the healthy label. That means uh, um, for the for the reconstructed image X0 hat, uh, we expect the image, this image to be in the healthy class. And this is uh, achieved by the guidance from the pre-trained classifier. That means we use this uh, image and the health label, we can treat it as a, a, a data point. And uh, we apply this uh, classifier on top of it. Once this approach, uh, once this model is trained, we get uh, a, pre, a, a trained uh, diffusion model and this diffusion model can uh, generate a um, reconstructed image X0 from, for any, for any like, input image X. Mm, and uh, once we get those 
uh, reconstructed image. This reconstructed image, we compile it with the, the original input image and get the difference map. This difference map um, uh, can, tell, can tell us whether there is an anomaly region or disease in the, in the input image. For example, if the magnitude of this uh, difference map is uh, pretty big, then we expect the, the original, in, original input image is very different from the reconstructed image. And the, since this image is in the healthy class, that means the, the input image is in the, the other class, basically the, the disease class. Okay, here is a, a procedure code about the, of, the, of the training process. So the input of this um, uh, approach is an input image and uh, a healthy class and also a gradient scale and the noise level. This S and L are associated with the diffusion model. And the input of this algorithm will be a synthesized image X0. You can treat the reconstruction of this X and um, a, a, a anomaly map A that is derived from X and X0. So in the in the forward, the forward noise process, we generate the uh, new no new noisy image from the previous step uh, noisy image, and in the reverse uh, denoising process, we first uh, estimated the um, the noise. Uh, of course, uh, this noise estimation will depend on the uh, the classifier's performance, a classifier's prediction. Basically, this C is the uh, the pre-trained classifier. And once we get the estimate, we can get an estimate. Est once we get the estimate of the noise, then we can get an estimate of the um, of the image in the previous iteration, because xt minus one. So for once all these steps are um, are done, are trained, then we can use use this. Uh, diffusion model to get the, the difference map. And the one thing I want to mention here is the same unit module uh, is used in all the forward noise process and the reverse uh, denoising process. And the, the goal is, uh, yeah, as uh, I just mentioned, that it's to translate all, all the input images into one specified class. Mm. About empiric performance, yeah, here I, I showed the result for two different type of uh, images. Uh, the first one is the images without the uh, any disease. It's healthy. Um, yeah, the, the image is in the healthy class, health class. Um, you can see the, the anomaly map has a very small magnitude. And uh, also for the diffusing model, it also achieves a uh, very small uh, anomaly map. But for these uh, images with a tumor, for them here with a disease, then we can see the anomaly map has a, a very large magnitude and similar for the diffusing model. And here is a, a plot for demonstrating the, the quantitative performance of the approach. Here's the death score uh, that can be achieved by yeah, the highest die score that can be achieved by this approach is about 0.7. And uh, the highest uh, AUROC score that can be achieved by this approach is about uh, 0 0.99, 0 0.986. Yeah. Okay, that's all. Thank you.